another month, another chance to try to find a home for some new additions. Let's talk about July, guys. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another book haul, this time for July of 2022. A little lighter month this time, but it's probably for the better. In fact, the whole room is a little lighter because I did actually unload about 150 to 200 books. I didn't count exactly, but it was quite a few. My good friend Brian Lee Durfee, who you might know, he actually brought up the idea of a donation to a local prison. Now, I was thinking about donating to the library, but the library wanted to pick and choose what they would take. I was debating Goodwill, uh, they don't really know what to do with them. Pawn shops. I really know what to do with them. I just want to kind of give them to someone that they could get use out of them. And he suggested, why don't you take them to the local prison? And I was told by the local prison here that, uh, yeah, they don't have state funding for things like these. So I, I felt like Andy Dufresne getting some new books for the library because, guys, uh, these were all, um, you know, stuff from publishers, stuff I've read, uh, e-arcs, stuff like that. Just all kinds of stuff that I felt like I was okay to let go and maybe give some joy to some of those people, you know, who were probably wanting to visit other worlds in these. So I want to thank Brian for giving me that idea uh, because I, I want to believe that uh, we brought some happiness to some people that hopefully they can find something in that big stack that I donated to them uh, this past month to uh, make a little more room in here and, uh, you know, hopefully make some, some room and some hearts out there. That's always the goal. So again, thank you, Brian. What a great, great idea. But guys, there are some things to talk about additions this month. Let's begin, guys, like usual, digital purchases, because you know, I know, we all know that they count, right? Uh, I did pick up a couple of things here. Uh, the first up is The Lot Lands by Jonathan French. I picked up The Gray Bastards and The True Bastards. This one is actually in my plans for 2023. Uh, there is a third book, but I ran out of digital credit, so I have to get that one later. <laughs> but I did get books one and two. These are some books that were actually recommended to me by uh, by Mark over at, uh, at uh, uh, sorry, Slowly Red. <laughs> my, my battery is actually flashing red right now, so it made me think, uh, what was I going to say? But uh, yeah, he actually recommended that to me, and he's never really steered me wrong. It's because of him that I read Empire of the Vampire. So I'll always be in his debt there and give anything that he recommends to me a try. Next up, uh, Beyond Redemption, another one that Mark obviously recommends. Uh, this is by Mark Michael R. Fletcher. This is one I've been told a lot about. I do actually have it on physical, but I figured it couldn't hurt to have it on the Kindle as well. As you know, uh, I like to take that with me to work, and every once in a while I just get this wild hair and just say, you know what, I'm just going to read that today. And I think that that one could actually fall under that umbrella. And then this one, guys, I know nothing about it. Basically, when I said that Cradle just seemed like it wasn't a series for me, uh, some people, you know, messaged me what would I didn't like about it, what did I think, what did I like, what did I not like. And what they've said is they think that the Emberverse by S.M. Sterling would be something that they think that I would be more into. I found a pretty good deal on those. So I went ahead and picked up a handful of those to see if uh, if I liked those. So I don't know anything about the Emberverse, but, uh, you know, you've got this many books. Uh, they've all got thousands of reviews on Goodreads. Obviously, it's a series that's pretty popular. That's always just kind of flown under my radar. So if you have any feedback to give, uh, please do. But uh, I don't have anything to say about them. Obviously, uh, nothing in the plans as of the moment. But that is what I added to the old Kindle for this month. How about some physical purchases? I, I did treat myself a little bit. I got a couple of things for myself this month. Uh, obviously, uh, I love Robert E. Howard. I've talked about Conan on the channel numerous times. So I said, what stuff by Robert E. Howard do I not have? Let's start collecting that. So I got his first uh, best of collection, this is Crimson Shadows. Now there is some Conan stuff in here, but there's some stuff also that isn't Conan. And I'd like to read some more of his stuff. But uh, these are pretty handsome collections. They kind of, uh, obviously it's not as good as that big leather bound, but I do have the, uh, the what, the Solomon Kane and the, uh, gosh, what is it, uh, Cole, Cole, Cole of Atlantis. I've got those that are the same size, so it kind of matches with that set as well. There is a volume two that I'll look into, uh, see if I can find in the future as well. And I just realized I got like a postcard and some bookmarks in here. And oh, look at that, Robert E. Howard days in 2011. Celebrate the uh, 
the 100th anniversary of Cross Plains, 75th anniversary of Robert E. Howard's death, 50th anniversary of the Howard Collector, 25th anniversary of Howard Days. Uh, I don't know what this is. But anyway, uh, I, I maybe this came from the straight from the Robert E. Howard Foundation. I don't know. I did buy it used. So there is that, guys. <laughs> nice little gizmos to find in these uh, these used books. Uh, next up, guys, I did really like Robert McCammon. You know, and I really liked when I read uh, Hyperion. I liked when I read Robert McCammon's Swan Song. And, and when I, especially when I read Boy's Life, a lot of recommendations came for this. So uh, the reason I connect these two authors is because the book I'm talking about is called Summer of Night. This is a book by Dan Simmons, who wrote Hyperion. Uh, that I, People said if you really like Boy's Life, if you like It by Stephen King, obviously I do, that this is going to be a story they think that I like quite a bit. So I found that one used and said, why not? Let's go ahead and give that a go. This is a well-loved copy. So anybody thinks I only have to have pristine copies in my library. It's not true. It's not true. But uh, it's got a blurb by Stephen King on the front. So, uh, you know, he's got a, he's got a nice uh, recommendation there. But uh, I, I really liked, uh, what have I read by him? The horror. The horror is all, or terror. Sorry, the terror I've read by him. And I've read Hyperion. That's it. Now, I know a lot of people want me to keep going with Endymion. But I think, uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't wild about Fall of Hyperion. So I said, man, maybe I'll just wait for a while. So I can see myself doing this one before because I am really, really loving uh, Robert McCammon and this gets a lot of comparisons of this, this and Stephen King. So uh, there, it's uh, something that I always listen to you guys. And if I if I had room in my, uh, my uh, you know, my spooky season this year is what I do all the horror reads in October. I'd fit this one in, but afraid that's actually booked right now. But I can see this happening uh, just when I have time for a standalone or something. So how about some uh, some indie and self-published stuff? Let's look at some of those. All right, a big old stack here. But like I've always said, guys, uh, I probably don't have time to read any or review any of these. But I, I, if people want to send them to me, I have no problem giving me a shout out, getting you some recognition, hopefully uh, get you some attention out there. Like I, I know that uh, Sebastian Menke's book last month got a lot of attention. So that's obviously what I'm trying to do here. So if uh, people want to send things to me, that's fine. I've got no problem talking about it. But uh, I, I do hope they understand I don't have, I don't, probably don't have time to read this stuff right now. But uh, I will give the description and the, and the links to their stuff down below if you want to check it out yourself. First is just a serial here. This is a mini tale, a cosmic fantasy serial by Jacob John White. And I do appreciate the note, sir. It was very, very kind. And uh, yeah, this one uh, I might actually hand to my kids. You know, uh, I like giving them stuff. It's got, it's got, a, it's got a sword fighting mouse. I might make them think of Reaper Cheap, who they love quite a bit, and uh, you know, I do as well. Next up, this one is from John Palladino. This is the Trials of Ashmount, and he gave me a nice note on the front. Compares himself to saying that, uh, imagine this was Joe Abercrombie with a hard magic system. So yes, he knows what grabs my attention. Obviously, is, is probably a watcher of this channel. I'd imagine to tell me something like that, that uh, that will get my attention. This one didn't come without a note or anything. It just came. I can assume it is from the author Andrew Gibbler. This is Soul Fraud. I don't think this one's out yet. This actually has a, a, a not for resale on the front, but you know, sometimes they have those and sometimes they don't. They just have like a street date on the front. Uh, but you know, I not reselling these. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's next up, uh, The Battle of Evermore. That's an awesome Led Zeppelin song, right? That's the first thing that I came to. It's like, hey, I mean, this, this is what the, this about the Led Zeppelin song? Which, you know, the Led Zeppelin song people always assume was about Tolkien, and it wasn't. It was actually about something that happened in real life history that Robert Plant was reading at the time. But you know what? Well, uh, they, they love Lord of the Rings and Led Zeppelin, and uh, I'm, I'm willing to bet that Zachary Skiver, 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 sorry, not sure which one, I'm willing to bet that he loves Led Zeppelin too with The Battle of Evermore being the title. Now, if I'm being obtuse and Battle of Evermore is a real thing and not just something made up by Led Zeppelin, let me know. Because I know for years people used to argue that all that was was their love for uh, Led Zeppelin. Robert Plant would say, no, it was actually something that happened in history that uh, he was reading about before they wrote that song. But uh, again, don't think it was actually called the Battle of Evermore. And now I have detracted quite a bit from the actual purpose of this video. But you start getting me talking about Led Zeppelin. I'm liable to go off on a little bit of a tangent. This one is called The Empire of the Sun and Moon by Mr. Rob Hobart. And he sent me the entire set, all five of them. And they are not skinny books. Uh, but again, another nice note. I do appreciate that, sir. Uh, I looked these up before I went just because, uh, you know, a lot of independent authors, uh, they have one book or they have two books. You don't usually see a completed series like this, but uh, I, I do see that there is actually some attention to it. And I was reading about it. It actually seems quite quite interesting, but uh, I do like the, I think what he said in here was that, you know, he's not quite as grimdarky as me, but he has a love for the classics like Tolkien, Lewis, and Herbert, uh, you know, but uh, I, I do appreciate this very, very much. I like your covers quite a bit. The covers are quite pretty 
on these. So uh, these are always things I would hope that you guys will check out. It almost looks like it has a little bit of a Japanese influence here, you know, a little Shogun in there. So that looks pretty cool. It kind of makes me think of those, uh, what is it, Never Die? Who is that author that writes those books? I, I can't think, but the artwork kind of makes me think of that one. Uh, if someone remembers what that is down below. Very, very like samurai looking a little bit. So uh, anything that's got a little bit of a, a Japanese influence in it is very, very cool as, as someone who's very much into the Japanese culture. Uh, I think that's very, very cool. But uh, thank you, Rob. I do appreciate that. And lastly, this is called The Legend of Blackjack from R.A.R. Witham. Now, this is one that's actually been talked about a lot lately, at least on my Discord. Uh, I think uh, uh, Madison and the Ball Booktuber, that's both of my hosts from our House of the Dragon uh recap or after show that we're going to be doing just self plug there guys uh, after house of the dragon each week uh probably monday or tuesday after that episode we're going to be doing uh, an after show with that and taking live questions and breaking down the episode and how it compares to fire and blood by george r, r. martin so hope you guys will be watching and you know, we've recorded the first episodes if you guys want to check those out but anyway those are my co-hosts but they have both read and reviewed this and had great things to say about it and Mr. Witham himself has actually joined the Discord and has been talking in there. So I do appreciate any time an author will mingle with us commoners, as I call it. And a very, very cool cover. And I've heard some really good things about the book. So uh, I hope you guys will definitely uh, check this one out. Like I said, all these I will put in the link, uh, the link to everything down below if you want to check them out for yourself. And hopefully give these gentlemen or ladies an opportunity to entertain you that's what something i always say about independent and self-published authors is chase your dreams guys i've always been supportive that chase your dreams because every author that we love at one point was trying to get people to read their book so i'm here for it how about something from some publishers guys i got some more stuff from bain this month obviously the headliner larry correa always gets uh, some attention when you come to bain books not read the blood, uh, any Larry Correa yet, but uh, Monster Hunter is one that when I talked to Jim Butcher that he highly recommended was Monster Hunter. Uh, World Breakers, this is a collection uh, edited by our friend Mr. Rocchio when he was with Bane still. And then, of course, Saving Proxima by Travis Taylor. A couple more, a couple more big ones here. They always send some nice hardcovers as well. Mike Kupari, this is uh, Trouble Walked In. Again, guys, I'll put this stuff down below because I don't know anything about these authors. Kevin Eikenberry, this is The Crossing. This looks like some more of the alternate history one. They do those those 1667 or 1776 ones where it's like actual like alternate history. And I love alternate history. I think it's a lot of fun to play around with. And lastly, another Travis Taylor. This is Ballistic, a nice hardcover edition here. So always I want to thank Bain for continuing to send me stuff because even if I'm not reading it, uh, someone is reading it, guys, because uh, I, I do like to forward those to a lot of my sci-fi friends who actually have time and don't run a booktube channel to read some of those things. So how about some stuff from some viewers here? There are a few things I want to talk about if I can reach them here. Uh, first up, this one is from my uh, one of my patrons, Sarah. Uh, Sarah, I appreciate you. You sent me a ton of stuff, and this time they have sent me the new book in The War for the Rose Throne. This is Priest of Gallows by Mr. Peter Macklin. Uh, I believe this series is done now. I believe the fourth book is actually out, or I, I don't know. Maybe he just finished it. It may not be out yet, but I know he has recently said on social media that he has finished the story, and he's very, very happy about it. So uh, I know this one was talked about being uh, uh, adapted for television. Uh, as you've seen with a lot of things, like, for example, the Greenbone Saga was going to be adapted, and, and finally herself said it's not happening now. So a lot of these things, they get purchased. It doesn't mean that they're ever happening. So there's tons of things I can think of right now that have been optioned. Uh, the, the Broken Empire, Mike Lawrence has been optioned. Uh, the Blood, uh, the, not Blood Mage, uh, Powder Mage, by Brian McClellan has been optioned. This has been optioned. A lot of these things have been optioned. They never actually materialize. But, you know, if that ever does happen, I'll definitely make sure that I read this before that comes out. My plan right now is in 2023 to kind of check these out. This was a series that uh, John Gwynn recommended to me when I was talking with him, and he was right about Bernard Cornwell. So that, this, and of course, David Gimmel would be the ones that John did recommend to me. So thank you, Sarah. I do appreciate it. Uh, Dustin, now if you don't guys don't remember, Dustin is actually the one who sent me the first three Legend of Driss books, the Dark Elf trilogy. Well, as a thank you, I think, uh, for actually reading those and reviewing those and liking those quite a bit, he did send me the, the graphic novel adaptation of the Dark Elf Trilogy, and this artwork is incredible. There's Guinevere there. Uh, so, so cool, guys. Uh, so thank you, Dustin. I do appreciate this. I am going to be continuing 
with Legend of Drizzt just really when I have some time. Uh, I, I think right now I'm kind of, I was kind of open, but you know, we're getting closer to October and spooky season is a dedicated time period that I'm gonna be spending on just horror stuff. I'll have different content on the channel, but that's all I'm gonna be reading for that month. But I will be continuing with Icewind Dale uh, in the future. So Dustin, thank you for opening up a new world for me with Dungeons and Dragons uh, Forgotten Realms and The Legend of Drizzt, a story that I've always put off, but I've actually really, really liked the beginning of that story. Now getting that in a nice graphic novel by IDW, that's a, that's, a, that's a nice, tasty little treat there. So I do appreciate that. You guys, probably, you guys heard me talking about uh, Brian Lee Durfee earlier. Uh, I, had, I had him on when I talked to Chris Rocchio and Madison on one of my, I think it was Saturday Night Nights 2, which is just like our coffee house discussion, really is what it is. We don't really have a topic. We just talk and see what happens. And we were talking on there, he kind of did bring it to my attention that with his third book that's coming out in Five Warrior Angels, that's The Lonesome Crown, is that it was not going to be getting a hardcover printing uh, because there is a paper shortage right now. There is stuff, all kinds of problems with publishing right now. And I think because I was kind of bummed out about that because I have the first two on hardcover. Well, I got a package from him about two weeks after that conversation and inside he had the trade paperbacks for both of his first two books with a note that said, Throw away those worthless hardcovers, so you'll have a series here. This will have, so you'll have a series that matches. So uh, Brian continues to be the most amazing human being I know. Uh, just an awesome guide, overflowing with positivity, and I, I'm glad. I feel like that's something I try to promote on my channel, and Brian does as well. Because in the end, we're just two gentlemen who love to read books and we love to share that love. And uh, Brian, I have started your book. Uh, I have read the prologue. I'm about halfway through the first chapter. Getting some real faithful in the fallen vibes out of there, which I, which is a high compliment coming from me. So I'm very excited. That I'm finally reading Brian's book, especially since I have two copies of each of the first two books now. But uh, yeah, I am excited to really do that. And Brian, thank you. You're so thoughtful as always. You continue to be the absolute best, and I do appreciate you, my good sir. Uh, lastly, not last, I got a couple more things here. Uh, this one. Uh, you've seen the last few book hauls. Uh, Joseph is apparently real excited to keep building on my James Bond folio for me because he got me the next one. This is this is Goldfinger. Is that not cool? If you guys know the story of Goldfinger, you know why that cover is amazing. Uh, but yeah, it's a big, big moment in the book. So you're like, ah, it's kind of spoiler. But if, yeah, but who hasn't seen Goldfinger? At least that scene at this point, the movie, right? But Folio Society always just does the most. And I can never find art to show you guys when I want to show it on video. But yeah, the, the, the artwork in Follow Society books continues to be amazing. I do hope to continue with James Bond with Live and Let Die sometime later this year because I read Casino Royale. And that was the first James Bond book I read. Now, I love the movies, but I never really read the book except for Casino Royale now. So uh, yeah, I really did enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to continuing that. And, and Joseph, I mean, it's... It, I think it's amazing you want to keep doing this. We don't have to. Uh, I love that you that you want to do this because I know these aren't cheap. My man, thank you so much. They look amazing. I'm looking at them right now. Uh, this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh one now that he has gifted me. And again, you continue to just treat me way too good. And uh, thank you so much. You are the best, sir. I do appreciate you. This is something that I did actually. Uh, it was something that was sent to me by by my uh, one of one of my. Uh, one of my friends on the Discord, uh, and we'll just, we'll just call her Ann Moo. That was kind of her name. But she sent me a Westeros map because I told her at the time that I didn't have one that was frame size. Because I got one in that Folio Society. It's just massive. And I was like, I was not going to pay to have that frame. So she sent me a smaller one of the free cities in Westeros. And I finally had it framed. <laughs> I don't know if you can actually even see it because of the light. But I finally had it framed. Now I've just got to try to figure out some way to move stuff around the room to make some uh, wall space for it because I got the pictures up above here. It won't fit above there. So uh, I'm not really sure where I'm going to put it yet. I'm thinking about moving my Led Zeppelin and Beatles stuff into the room that actually has like my, my CDs. You guys remember CDs? Yeah, I do have those in there in another room. I'm thinking about maybe moving that and putting up this and some other Sanderson ones that I have. And, you know, there's always room for more artwork and maps, guys. I love maps. Lots and lots of good maps. And this is one of the best maps of all time. I mean... I talk about maps. I mean, I think as a fantasy fan, we're always going to love maps. But here's the thing. I want a fantasy book to have a map at the beginning, but I almost never look at it, except for two worlds. The only two worlds I ever really look at that map is Middle Earth and Westeros and Essos and all of the Song of Ice and Fire. So I'm very, very happy to do that. And again, I got to say thank you to Anna. I mean, Ann Moo. I got to say thank you to her for, for doing that for me. Lastly, guys, I'm going to close this out by saying this was a nice, nice gift from a fellow Texan. This is Jason who wrote me just an incredible letter. Thank you, sir. It means 
a ton. I am going to take your D&D &D recommendation into account. Uh, I am really, really did love Drifts, but I don't want to, I don't want to go, I don't want to bypass Drifts before I get to this, but this is actually going to be on my radar. I recommend some Troy Denning. Uh, Troy Denning is an author I'm familiar with because of his work on the New Jedi Order in Star Wars. So I was very happy to see that, but he sent me a really, really cool game, a board game, which is book themed. And this of course is Red Rising. Let's see if you can see it uh, I don't know what the game's like yet. We haven't busted it out. My wife and I said that we were going to check it out after I made this video to see what it is like. But uh, yeah, that's just so cool. Thank you. This is so thoughtful. A lot of people have been telling me, uh, I have no idea what the book to get you because you're talking about that you don't have any more space on your floor. So I thought it'd be nice to either send you a coffee mug or send you a board game and stuff. That's, that's just incredibly thoughtful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I know it's not a book, but I want to include it in a book haul because someone was kind enough to you know, spend their own hard-earned money to send me something. That's the most highest compliment I think I can give you guys, and I appreciate it so, so much. So, guys, uh, that was my month for books. Did you get anything new this month? Why don't you drop in the comments and let me know, and I will talk to you there.